Thank you all for coming today. I'm Keiichi Kita from NTT Communication Japan, and this is Hitoyoshi Ota, my co-speaker and same development team member. Today, what we will explain is how we utilize Horizon in practical cloud service. Our company, NTT Communications, is now providing OpenStack-based cloud service named Enterprise Cloud, and we are using Horizon as a GI of this service. And we are a member of GI development team. This is today's agenda. At first, let me explain about our enterprise cloud service, and next, role of our development team. And finally, I will introduce why we are using Horizon as a base component of our GUI development. And next, I will explain three problems we face in our development and how we solve them as the main contents of this presentation. And finally, uh, I will hand over speaker role to Ozo san, and he will show the demonstration about our GUI. Uh, let me explain about our enterprise cloud service. This service has came out at March 2016 and toward to especially enterprise customer. And now this service is available in eight regions worldwide. Basically, we are using OpenStack as a base component of this enterprise cloud. And now Nova Cinder grants Keystone is available component. And we have planned to release Heat through Swift in this fiscal year. But this service is not consist of OpenStack component only. We have also implemented many of other original component and integrated them into this enterprise cloud. And the customer can use these all of the components from API or our GI Horizon. And next is role of our team. Our team's primary mission is development by using Horizon, but we are also providing command line interface tool and SDK of this service, so we are kind of interface software development team for this service and for customer. Basically, we are using OpenStack software for these three tools. For example, our CLI tool is a customized version of OpenStack command, and our SDK is also a customized version of uh, OpenStack Python SDK. And GI is needless to say based on based on Horizon. We, we have also responsibility for software release management, especially about GUI. Same as this service is available in eight regions, our GUI is also located in every region. So it is necessary for us to release this GUI uh, about once per month or more. So to summarize our role, development of these three kinds of softwares and release management of Horizon-based GUI. And next, uh, why we are using Horizon as a base of GUI? Development of this, of this service has started at April 2015, so, and we were assigned GUI development mission. And at that time, we thought we had nearly one year development time, but soon we found it's a really tough and hard schedule because we had to start quality assurance test from first of August, and the estimated number of pages at that time reached to 150 pages over, so, and we had only three members for GI development. So we thought we had to find some effective component for GI development, and found and tried many of GI framework, and finally reached to this horizon. After we found Horizon and started development by using Horizon, we were deeply impressed by the Horizon-based GI development speed. Because uh, Horizon is needless to say native OpenStack GUI, and we are also using OpenStack main components, Nova Shinda grants, and we are also using Keystone as an authentication backend of enterprise cloud service. So Horizon has a highest affinity to all of them, especially OpenStack part. And even our original component part, we thought Horizon has a desirable structure for integrating REST-based component. So at that time, we thought we had almost done the GI development just by finding the Horizon. But the more development progressed, the more problem found. We have faced basically three problems in our development, and this is the main contents of this presentation. First problem, problem is how to add original component to each software. Each software means CLI, GUI, SDK. At first, we only developed GUI part, but soon started to develop command line interface and SDK. 
And we realize we had to take many aspects into consideration to handle all of component and all of softwares. As to this problem, I will explain in detail uh, from the next slide. The next problem is how to manage software release over the eight regions. Even this service is available in eight regions. Mm, there, in fact, there is a difference in available component of each region. And this difference itself is changing frequently. So from the standpoint of GI development team, we have to keep track of these changes because, as you know, Horizon has a left, side, left hand side accordion menu in every case. And we need to keep changing uh, correctly according to each region's component status. So it is a really difficult problem for us in software release management. And the third point is how to keep high availability of our GI infrastructure. This, has, this service is basically toward the enterprise customers, so it is really important to keep high availability of our GUI system. So it is important for us to how to design the infrastructure layer, not only application layer. And these are the three problems we've faced in our development. And from next slide, I will explain them one by one. And the first problem is how to add original components. And about this problem, I will explain three points, basically. First point is, we need to take effect from original components into consideration, especially about GUI development. In this slide, red cube like Nova means an open stack component, and blue cube means original component. And you can see the, find the network original component at the right hand side of this page, and you can, you can see also a uh, neutron icon is now esca escaping from this slide. What I want to say in this, press, uh, in this page is we are not using neutron and using alternate, uh, original network component as alternative component for this neutron. And this really affects the horizon's behavior, especially about Nova phases. Because as you know, inside from Nova phases, horizon is executing many of neutron API to get the instance network information but this part did not work correctly. Of course, because we are changing the network component. And the most simple way to fix this problem is just to rewrite or modify Horizon code itself. But if we do so, this is the next point about this problem. If we modify directly Horizon code itself, it becomes really difficult to get upstream changing of Horizon remote repository into our repository, because these cases usually cause many of conflicts. So we had to find some effective way to realize both. Uh, even we need to prepare for upstream changing of Horizon, but we need to change the behavior of Horizon. And the third part about this problem is we need to enhance the efficiency of development. Because we need to handle many of the components regardless of open sub component or original component. And we need to also integrate all of them into three parts, GLI, GI, SDK. So uh, to handle, uh, to learn how to handle these cases, uh, we first run OpenStack standard development style. And we found we also developed three parts in this OpenStack standard development style. First development part is client part. So let me assume if component is Nova, Client part means Python Nova client. And usually this client part including CLI and SDK inside of it. And the next development part is GUI part, I mean Horizon. Usually we use an SDK inside of client as an API execution logic from this GUI part and write front end code by using API execution logic from uh, return from client. And the third development part is SDK part. What I mean in SDK in this page is dedicated kind of SDK, like Python OpenStack SDK. In, in our case, we need to add Nova function into this SDK part also. But in this style, we need to add almost the same function into separated two parts, client inside SDK and dedicated type of SDK. So we thought, if we can unify that these API execution logic into one part, we can gain the efficiency of development. 
So finally, we reach to this development style. First, we've developed is uh, Python SDK for Enterprise Cloud center of this figure. We have integrated uh, API execution logic of all components into this part, and now CLI and GUI is using this part commonly. And that, I think you remember that we need to change the behavior of Horizon, and how we change the behavior of Horizon is, first we create extended class from native Horizon code and locate them into kind of separated directory inside of our repository. We usually call this separated directory as overridden part. After we create extended class and locate them into overridden part, we will switch, we usually switch user access route from native Horizon to this overridden part by using URL routing equivalent to Django's URL conf. This is how we are changing the Horizon's behavior, but you can find we've never modified any of Horizon code itself so because it is also easy to get upstream changing of Horizon into our repository because there is no conflict. This is how we are doing the CLI GUI SDK development. And additionally, we have succeeded in version up of GUI based Horizon from Juno version to Mitaka version at last match. So I think this is kind of proof that this development style is now correctly working. This is how we solve the problem one. And let's move on to next problem. And next problem is how to manage software release over the eight regions. Important point about this problem is basically three point. First point is uh, there is a difference in available component. And next point is this difference itself is changing frequently. And third point is our GUI is also located in eight regions, so we need to change GUI accordion menu depending on each region's available component status. And to understand this problem more deeply, I have prepared an example case in this page, so let me explain about it. This page assumes in Japan region, this month, there is a four open stack component and two original component exist as a available component. But next month, one open stack component, in this case heat, and two original components is released. But at the same time, in US region side, this month four open stack one and three original one exist, and next month no open stack component and three original component is released. And like this example, each region has a completely different lifecycle management about available components. And we need to keep track of these changes from GUI team standpoint because we need to change GUI accordion menu according to these component side changes. So this is really difficult problem for us in software release. Previous page is just an example, but this is a real case, part of real case. I have quoted this screenshot from our service information site called Knowledge Center. And this table shows you which component is now available in eight region. You can see that JP1 region has all component as available component, but AU1 does not have all. And in this case, we are changing the accordion menu of Horizon, like uh, right-hand side of this, this page. You can find each year has different menu. But it is usually becomes complex management if we manage these case by, on, by using code management system like Git. So we have implemented two kind of dedicated logic for this, this program. Our horizon has basically two parts for this purpose. First part is menu controlling logic. And the next part is region specific setting file written in YAML format like uh, us1.yaml, jp1.yaml, au1.yaml. Once our GUI has deployed to some regions, our Horizon automatically find where it is deployed now. And find, start to find region specific setting file depending on deployed region. And inside of this region specific setting file, there is a menu structure written in YAML format like right hand side of this page. And Horizon start to read this and automatically create a accordion menu by using contents of this YAML setting file. 
So what we are doing in software release is just send the same code to every region, accepting the difference of this region-specific setting file. So afterward, Horizon will do everything about region difference. This is how we solve the problem too, and this function really helps us to ease software release and also code level management. And let's move on to the third problem, how to keep high availability of our GUI. Uh, this, this service is basically towards to enterprise customers, so it is really important for us to keep high availability of our GI system. And to consider high availability, we, I think we need to consider these two aspects. First aspect is we need to minimize system downtime, even there is many times of software release. And next problem is, our uh, next point is how to block mistake operation. And to minimize system downtime, we are using blue-green development technique. Blue-green is, as you know, one of the release software release technique to minimize system downtime and to ease system rollback. If we take normal style of software release, we need to replace active system application with a new version one. But in this style, it sometimes becomes difficult to restore its original state when we need to do some rollback if we find some mistake or procedure bug. Blue-green deployment is used to avoid such situation. In blue-green deployment, first we need to do is just create a standby system with a new version application during active system is working. And this never affects to any customer because no one is now using this standby side system. And at the release date, just a switch user access route from active system to standby system, so release itself will be finished at the moment. And if we find some bugs or mistake after release has finished, it is also easy to roll back this system because what we need to do is just do the same operation to opposite direction. So this technique is really useful for us to minimize the system downtime and to ease rollback of this system. But I think there is one demerit in blue-green deployment. Blue-green deployment technique gains the infrastructure cost uh, because we need to maintain two systems at a time. So to prevent such excessive cost for infrastructure, we are using Docker as a base infrastructure of blue-green. We are using two kinds of container for this purpose. First container is proxy container. HA proxy is working inside of this container and we can switch blue and green system by switching the HA proxy configuration inside of this container. So this proxy container works as blue green switcher of this system. And next container is GUI container. Apache and Moto WS GI is working inside of this container and we, our application Horizon is hosted on this GUI container. And by using these two kind of com container combination, we have created a um, blue-green deployment system over the two servers like this. First, user access will reach to external load balancer. And this external load balancer transfer user access proxy con to proxy container on both Docker server. And finally, this proxy container transfer user access is a blue or green system, depending on current available configuration of HA proxy inside of this container. So what I mean is, we have created blue and green system over the two servers like this, and we can switch these two kinds of systems by switching HA proxy configuration. So this is how we are minimizing the system downtime and also is rollback by using Docker and blue-green development technique. And next is how we are preventing the operation mistake. To enhance the operation convenience and also to prevent operation mistake, we have implemented two kinds of dedicated commands for this purpose. First command is proxy.sh. We usually use this command when we want to switch the blue and green system. And next is GUI switch. We usually use this command when we want to remove or recreate GUI container. So our release process is like this. First, we remove 
、スタンバイサイド GUI コンテナ、バイオジング GUI.sh、and afterward we will recreate GUI コンテナ、with new version application, also by using GUI.sh。And finally,、uh, use ProxySH and Switch Plugin System, I mean active and standby. And switch, after switching successfully finished,、uh, new version application will be exposed to customer. And from this slide, I will show you the real execution example of, of ProxySH and GUISH. And this page is about Proxy.sh. I am typing proxy.sh status at the top of this command line, and this command now returns blue highlighted string as a result of this command. And this means current available system is blue in both Docker server. So this command returns really intuitive result because we can recognize which system is active only by seeing the color of result. And next time I'm typing proxy.sh green, and this command means I want to switch. Blue green, blue green system from blue to green. And now this command returns green highlighted string, and this means、uh, blue to green switch has successfully finished, and now already active system is turned to green. So this command is really useful for us because we can operate two systems at a time, two servers at a time, and it also returns really intuitive result. And next is GUI search example. I am typing proxy.sh status at the top of this command line to confirm current, which color is current active system, and now this command returns blue. So, this now available system is blue. And in this case, if we remove GUI blue container by mistake, it becomes a fatal problem because user is now accessing to blue container, so it becomes a fatal problem if we remove the blue container. So, to prevent such situation, we usually type GUI.sh without any argument prior to operation of GUI, GUI container. And in this case, this command returns current available operation as a command result. Now you can find GUI.sh01 green delete is exist, exists in this command result. And this means green, remove G, Green, green GUI container is available operation according to current active system. As you can, you can understand, there is no effect if we remove green GUI container to the customer because current active system is blue. But you can also find there is no operation about blue GUI container in this command result because these operations should be prevented according to current active system. So, this is how we are preventing the operation mistake. Prior to GUI container operation.、And、I have finished to explain about three problems and how we solved them. But our project has an additional challenge. Since 2010, we are providing another kind of cloud service. And voice of customer usually said、uh, Customer wants to ease cloud environment management by using drag and drop action or drawing action kind of system diagram. So, we are now trying to integrate many of operations into one system diagram. And as a first step of this challenge, we have implemented drag and drop template generator for newly coming component heat. Heat is, as you know, OpenStack orchestration service, and we, are plan we have planned to release this heat component. In this month, at the latest. So, from now on, I will hand over speaker to Ota san and he will show you the demonstration about this drag and drop template generator part. This is all for my presentation. Thank you so much so far. Hi, everybody. Do you remember me? I'm Hitoyoshi Ota, a software engineer working for NTT Communications in Japan. So, As he mentioned earlier, we decided to write a program that generates a heat template with drag and drop action. So,
Okay. Uh, this is a GUI of our cloud service. And as you can see at the left side, this is our service menu, and we call it uh, Deployment Manager, as written here. So let's move stack list page. Okay. Uh, there is a new generate template button to move the page for creating a system diagram. Okay, let's move to the page. Okay, generate template page is displayed, and you can create your expected system diagram. In other words, you can drag and drop the resources on the left side, like this, and click the resource to uh, set the parameters. Also, you can uh, connect some resources if there are dependencies between resources. Then, also, of course, you can create templates with this folder. And if you want to create a stack uh, by your template. Also, you can do that on this page. Okay, and so also you can create, create, reset the system diagram like this. Okay, let me show you how to create a template in detail. Uh, first, I'm going to set up a network. This network uh, is compatible with Neutron's network, as you, as you know. So let's drag and drop and click the resource. And OK, it takes the name to demo. Then click the tab to set subnet parameters. So set side range to 192. That's 24. Okay. Next, set gateway IP to. Okay. I input enough parameter to create the network. Let's save. Um, save has been done successfully and displayed network's name and side range here. Okay. Next. I'm going to set up a Nova instance. So drag and uh, okay, drag and drop, and click the resource in the same way as before. Okay, let's start name. To it's too better to type demo instance. Next image. Mm. I like Ubuntu. Yeah. Then flavor is better to set tiny, right? Okay. And saved. Save has been done successfully, and also the instance name is displayed here. So next, I'm going to connect these resources. So let's click edit button and connect the resource button to make these resources available for connection. And you can connect same resources like this. It's very easy. Then click the block line to set IP address. Okay. Yeah. If you want to get the IP address from DHCP, uh, you should click save button without entering IP address. The path window and it's become solid line and displayed IP address here. Okay. So next, it's time to create template. It's very easy. Yeah, congratulations. The heat template is generated. So, and you can create the stack from this page. So, final step let's create stack with this volume. So if we do that, 
if you do so, oh, ah, yeah. It automatically transitions to create stack page like this. And I create the stack in a way, as you know. Okay. Yes. Everything is completed. And some resources has been created. And yes, so we are sure our enterprise customers will be fully satisfied uh, with this temp uh, template generator. And because so customers can create template without remembering how to Right template, heat template, yeah. Okay. Let's return to the slide. Okay, and we are planning to release this generator and heat component in next week. Do you like it? And this is summary of our presentation. Uh, we've explained how to solve three problems we've faced through development. Uh, first, uh, we are now using unified SDK from GUI and CLI so that we can enhance efficiency of our development. Yeah. Uh, second, we are creating region YAML file to its eight region management. Yeah. And third, we enhance availability of in our infrastructure by using Docker-based blue-green deployment system. And we show you demonstration of a template generator that will be released soon, yeah. Okay, this is all of our presentation. And I hope we can return something to OpenStack community with our development results, yes. Thank you. Any question? Ah. Okay. Are you uh, releasing the heat template generator as open source or only in your own cloud? Uh, well, we are planning to release this template generator and heat component also in this month at the latest. I think next month, uh, next week. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No? Thank you for all. Thank you very much. Thank you.